And here we are at the back of the rack. You can see all the plumbing. Those two pumps pump 20 aquariums full of water. Now, one thing I want you guys to be mindful of, if you are intending to set up a system like this. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be looking at the return lines I have set up on my central sump system. All the aquariums on this side of the fish room are hooked up to a central sump. And over the last few months, I've had a few people ask me to do a video on how I pump all the water back up to the aquariums from the sump. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this week's video. So let's get into it. So I thought we'd start where the water originates from, from my sump. And in my sump, at the moment, I have three return pumps. Now, I want you to ignore the return pump with this clear vinyl hose. That return pump is purely there as a temporary measure to filter water to my two five foot aquariums that I recently purchased. That's only there temporarily, and it's gonna be actually housed in its own sump that I'm gonna be setting up over the next few months. But what I want you guys to concentrate on in this video is the two pumps that have the white PVC pipe coming out of them. Those two pumps pump 20 aquariums full of water. The one on the right pumps aquariums on the top row, and there's 12 two foot by one foot aquariums on the top row. The pump on the left pumps water to my six aquariums on the middle row, which are two foot wide by two foot long by one foot high. And it also pumps water to my two four by two by two foot aquariums. So the pump on the left pumps water to eight aquariums, pump on the right pumps water to the top row of tanks and it goes to 12 aquariums. Now, the first thing I wanna point out in my plumbing is, you might notice these wide sections of white PVC plumbing uh, and they're actually called check valves. It's very important that you install check valves, well I believe, on your uh, plumbing, on your sump system and you can only install them on the, re on the return lines. Now what check valves do? If the power was to cut, the check valves will close and they'll prevent water coming back down the return plumbing into the sump. If you have too much water going back to your sump, you can overflow your sump and flood your fish room. Uh, then that goes for any sump system. So I really recommend you put check valves on your plumbing. Now, they, I could take those check valves off because I've got clear vinyl hose with metal ties connecting them to my return pumps. So if something was to happen uh, with a pump failing or I needed to get new check valves on there, I could cut the PVC hose off install new check valves and attach them to my return pumps. So I recommend you have that kind of quick release valve, so to speak, on your return lines. Without those, you could potentially flood your sump. Uh, so they're there to safeguard that from happening. So in this next part of the video, I wanna show you guys the plumbing at the back of this whole rack. Uh, it is quite narrow, but I'm gonna try and film it for you guys on the DSLR camera. Looks like a maze, but I'll explain how everything works to you over on the other side of this rack. And here we are at the back of the rack. You can see all the plumbing, looks a bit mental. And this took a while to set up and especially to build, but I'm quite proud of it because I am not a plumber. And it really does save me a lot of time with maintenance on these 20 tanks. All right, so I've kind of worked out how to angle the camera and fit behind here and hopefully get a good enough angle for you guys to see all the plumbing. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I really want you guys to try and ignore this clear vinyl hose as much as possible. It's just here as a temporary measure to pump water to two brand new five foot aquariums. Now, I wanna talk about how obviously the water goes to the aquariums. Now, these thick uh, bits of plumbing are the drain lines. So all the tanks have individual drain lines to a common drain line for each row. So that enables me to shut off any aquarium without disrupting aquariums on either side or above or and below those tanks. Now, these uh, thin lines that you see running here are the return lines. So what I'm gonna explain to you guys is first, the return lines that go to the bottom row and the middle row. So you can see these two angled pieces here, they come from the pump in the sump obviously, and they tee off one goes to the middle row. This angled piece here feeds water to the middle row of tanks. And this angled piece here that goes down feeds water to the two four foot aquariums on the bottom rack. Now what I recommend you guys do if you're gonna do something similar to this is I highly recommend you get these ball valves, these taps to regulate flow in each aquarium. You're never gonna know where in your system you're gonna have water naturally flowing faster in an aquarium and where you're gonna have water a little bit slower. So what I recommend you do, you install these ball valves, you can close off the aquariums that are filling up very fast, slow the rate of that, that flow, and that in turn will put more pressure on an, another tank to fill up a little bit quicker so you can get a level of equilibrium within your system. I really recommend you buy the ball valves, they're not cheap, 
but uh, if you shop around, you'll be able to find ball valves in your neck of the woods. So I really recommend you do put ball valves on your return lines. Don't waste your money. Don't buy them for your drain lines like I did on the top row. These massive ball valves that you see here were a complete waste of time. I never used them. Right, you only need ball valves on your return lines. So as I said, water flows to the bottom row of tanks and the middle row of tanks from this T intersection here. And then it tees off in the middle, just over here. So we've got, for my middle row of tanks, we've got a T intersection halfway between the rack. So I've got three tanks on this side of that T intersection and three tanks on this side of the T intersection, just to even out the flow distribution. Again, I can regulate it with the ball valves. So for instance, if water was to come directly from the sump to this aquarium here, and then flow to this aquarium and then all the way down the rack, the water would flow very quickly on this tank, but slowly right at the end of the rack. And you would definitely need the ball valves then to pretty much close off, almost close off uh, the water flowing into this tank where it's coming straight from the sump. And then you'd need it wide open right at the end. So it'd be a lot uh, a more fine tuning, I believe. So for more even distribution of flow throughout the rack, I've teed off the, uh, this common uh, return line to each tank in the middle of the rack rather than at one end, just for more even distribution of flow. Now let's talk about the top row of tanks. Like I said earlier in the video, the one pump pumps water to 12 tanks on the top row. Obviously because the tanks are higher, uh, I need a, a pump, a return pump with a higher head height. So when you're looking for pumps to buy for your sump system, if you're going to design something like this, look for a pump that has a very high head height. The head height on these pumps, I'll display it on the video here, I believe it's over five meters high, so more than enough water pressure to get water to the top row of tanks. Now, bear in mind, that's the height that the pump can pump to maximum. So water pressure isn't gonna be as strong as it says so on the box. Uh, so if you're buying a 15,000 liter per hour pump and it has a head height of five meters, it's not gonna be pumping at 15,000 liters at five meters, it's gonna be a lot lower. The amount of water it can push per hour is gonna be greatly reduced because of gravity, obviously. Now, I've got water coming from the sump to the top row of tanks at about two, uh, two meters, 2.3 meters. So I've got more than enough head height there, but I've got a lot of tanks. The, water, the pump isn't just pumping to one tank, it's pumping to 12 tanks. So I've got to account for the head height and the amount of flow I need to 12 tanks to have a good enough turnover rate. So I've got a 15,000 liter per hour pump doing that. And I've got the pump turned right down. So I've got a lot of wiggle room there if I needed it. So water from the bottom row of tanks comes up this PVC pipe here. It goes to here and I've had to bend it around using 45 degree elbows, the return line plumbing for the middle row. And then it goes up here to a 90 degree elbow, another 90 degree elbow. And then like the return plumbing on the middle row, it tees off in the middle, six tanks get water on that side. And then six tanks on this side get water as well. Now there's ball valves on the top row tanks as well on all the return lines. And I also can regulate the flow on the return pump with its microcontroller. So all the water is returned that way. Now there are a lot of pieces in this bit of plumbing. There's a off the main manifold that returns water to the tanks. There's a T piece, there's a reducing coupler, and then another reducing coupler to go to the diameter that I needed for this ball valve, a 90 degree elbow to go over the edge of the tank, a 90 degree elbow to go into the tank, and another 90 degree elbow, which isn't siliconed, which isn't PVC cemented to the whole fixture, that I can turn around and direct water flow into the aquarium, and I could take off for maintenance and cleaning. So uh, that's how water is returned into each tank. Now, one thing I want you guys to be mindful of, if you are intending to set up a system like this, both the end tanks on all rows of my aquariums uh, have elbows. So on the left side of the rack has a 90 degree elbow. On the right side of the rack, it has a 90 degree elbow as well, because that's the end of the return line. While the tanks in the middle of those ends have T pieces. So a T piece feeding water to the tank and then feeding water to the tanks on either side of it. However, obviously at the end, you can't have another T-piece because there's no tank further to the left of this aquarium. So we have 90 degree pieces. And I had to keep reminding myself that I didn't want to make them all with T-pieces because the end pieces, again, are elbows, are 90 degree elbows. All these took time to build, but I'm reaping the rewards now because maintenance on this system for these 20 tanks is effortless. 
It takes about an hour a week to do the water changes from 20 aquariums. Basically, I drain water from two four foot aquariums, drain them to about the 50% mark and fill them back up. And that's the water changes done on this entire rack. That's all I do. So it's as easy as that. Obviously, there are disadvantages with running a sump system, such as the spread of disease. Disease can spread very easily through a sump system. But things like uh, maintenance uh, for water changes, obviously, uh, things like water parameters don't fluctuate. They don't swing anywhere near as much as having an individual aquarium because you've got a large volume of water all connected up. We've got over 3,000 litres of water just on this side of the fish room. Now, one of the key things with Tanganyika cichlids is stable water parameters. So having a larger volume of water, this system again is over 3,000 litres of water, that allows me to have very stable water parameters than running individual tanks for my Tanganyika cichlids. Now if you run your fish room with individual aquariums, you're not going to suffer from temperature swings either, because ideally you'd be running the fish room off aircon. But you might suffer from uh, the water parameters sw swinging uh, a little bit quicker because of the smaller volume of water in those individual tanks versus a larger volume of water such as uh, what's on this sump system. But again, ease of maintenance with a sump system is massive. For instance, if I want to test the pH or hardness of my aquarium water, I just have to test it from one aquarium, not 20 individual tanks. Uh, so another benefit to a sump system. Now there are much easier ways of designing a sump system. The way I designed it, I wanted to be able to isolate any aquarium on this rack without needing to impede water to other aquariums that are either side of it or above and below it. Now a simpler design would be to pump water simply to the top row of tanks, have water drain from that top row into the middle row, then have water drain from the middle row into the bottom row or directly into the sump. Now the problem with that, so let's just say I wanted to put fish, I wanted to isolate fish in the top row of tanks. Okay, I'll shut off water to the top row of tanks, but then this tank here that relies on water flowing from the top tank, it won't get any water. So this tank is basically impeded as well. So you're losing a lot more tanks when you have to isolate fish either for quarantine or because they're sick, uh, or if you want to run different water parameters. And that on that subject, obviously I have to have the same type of fish on this system uh, to take advantage of the sump system because all the water is the same. I do treat my water on this sump system. I, I treat it with buffers and salts to make it a higher pH and to make my water hard because I keep Tanganyika cichlids. Uh, and, but that's okay because I know I'm going to be keeping Tanganyika cichlids. I can have all the water at the same parameters, no problem there. Uh, but if you are interested in keeping different fish, uh, say from South American cichlids as well as Malawi or Tanganyika cichlids uh, on, the, on the one system, uh, you probably could get away with it, but I really wouldn't recommend you do it because obviously South American cichlids generally require slightly acidic water and softer water. Uh, obviously Tanganyika cichlids are the opposite end, they're ex the opposite extreme end where they require or prefer higher pH and harder water. So I wouldn't recommend a sump system for you guys if you want to have different water parameters uh, on the one rack. Uh, I'd recommend if you're going to do that, you have two sump systems, one for the South Americans, one for the Africans, and then you'll be fine. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's another, I guess, con you could say of having a sump system, all the water parameters are the same, but I see there's a benefit because I know I'm just going to be keeping Tanganyika cichlids or Malawi cichlids and they're fine in the system because of, they require higher pH and hard water. But there you go guys, that's how this sump system is run. Took a few months to plan and set up. Uh, a lot of cutting and measuring of PVC pipes. Uh, and you know, there were leaks when I initially set it up and I took a bit of time to cut those sections out, re-plumb them, but I am reaping the rewards now because it's such an easy system to maintain. Now guys, if you want more information on how to run a sump system in a fish room, I suggest you watch this video here. If you want a full fish room tour for the year, watch this video here. Now guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.